Hello, this is module 14 of the course on application of spectroscopic methods in molecular structure determination. In the earlier module, we were discussing the study of dynamic processes by variable temperature NMR spectroscopy and saw several examples of restricted rotation, conformational changes and so on. We will continue along the same lines in this module also and look at some aggregation phenomena where aggregation is between two molecules in solution phase and look at some molecular rearrangements and finally look at some examples from the realm of organometallic chemistry. Let us start with molecular rearrangements. Molecular rearrangement is a very interesting phenomenon in organic chemistry and one of the most fascinating molecule which undergoes rapid rearrangement is called bulvaline. The structure of bulvaline is shown here. This is a very simple structure. The molecule has a molecular formula of C10H10. In other words, it is a C10H10 isomer. It has possesses a threefold axis of symmetry passing through the center of this cyclopropyl ring and passing through this methane carbon that is a C3 axis of symmetry. So you can see the structure is a simple structure where the cyclopropane is connected to three cis vinyl groups and the end of the cis vinyl groups are connected to a CH carbon at this end. So the axis of symmetry essentially passes through the center of the triangle, in other words a cyclopropyl ring and through this methane carbon. <coughs> This molecule is capable of undergoing molecular rearrangement and the number of structures that can be generated is 10 factorial divided by 3 because there are 10 carbons and the molecule possesses a C3 axis of symmetry. These rearrangements are essentially degenerate rearrangement. In other words, upon rearrangement, bulvaline produces itself and this kind of rearrangement is called a degenerate rearrangement and bulvaline does so by means of cope rearrangement which is a 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement. Now if you consider the cyclopropane this particular bond with the two vinyl groups and this can undergo this is actually a divinyl cyclopropane which can undergo the cope rearrangement which is a 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement. From the variable temperature NMR the activation barrier for this rearrangement has been calculated to be about 11.8 kilocalories per mole. Let us look at the rearrangement in a little more detail. What is happening here is the 3-5 bond is cleaved such that the rearrangement takes place with the pi system and a new bond is formed between 1 and 7. So the resulting structure you can see here for example or if you start from here this particular example the 1-7 bond is cleaved and the bond is formed between 3 and 5 with a concomitant rearrangement of the pi system which is the 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement. So one can break any one of the cyclopropyl bond and take a pair of vinyl groups that are attached to the cyclopropyl bond and rearrange it such that a new cyclopropyl group is formed with the rearrangement of the pi system and this is what is known as the 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangement particularly known as COP COP rearrangement in this particular case. There is a nice article in Journal of Chemical Education by Ault. It is called the Bulvaline story and it makes a very interesting reading to understand the 3-3 sigma tropic rearrangements that can take place in bulvaline. Now if you look at bulvaline rearrangement, every other product that is formed upon rearrangement is also a bulvaline. So this is considered to be a degenerate rearrangement. Now if you look at the proton NMR spectrum of bulvaline recorded at 60 MHz NMR spectrometer, at room temperature, you essentially close to room temperature, let us say around 15 degrees Celsius or so, you see a very broad hump kind of a signal and this is the TMS signal of the NMR. NMR signal of the TMS which is an internal standard. At plus 5 degree you see two humps and finally when it is frozen at minus 85 degrees you see two distinctly resolved signals one at 5.6 or 5.8 or so another one around 2.1 ppm integrating six hydrogens here and four hydrogens here. Now if you look at the bulvaline structure under the frozen conditions where the rearrangement is considerably slowed down, NMR would see three different types of hydrogen in this molecule, one belonging to the cyclopropyl hydrogen, the other one belonging to the vinylic hydrogen, and the third one belonging to the <coughs> CH of the methane hydrogen. Now the CH of the methane hydrogen and the cyclopropyl hydrogen accidentally merge with each other and they come at the same delta value of about 2.1 or so as a multiplet in this region. 
all the six vinyl hydrogen they come together as a bunch at around 5.8 ppm or so corresponding to six hydrogen intensity when the molecule is undergoing a very rapid 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement which is a degenerate rearrangement all the 10 hydrogens become indistinguishable for example what was originally a cyclopropyl hydrogen in this structure after the rearrangement becomes a methane hydrogen and a two vinylic hydrogen and what was originally two met uh, vinylic hydrogen and one methane hydrogen all become a cyclopropyl hydrogen so imagine this molecule is undergoing a very rapid 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement generating itself again and again the hydrogens become indistinguishable and at plus 120 degrees celsius the 10 hy hydrogens essentially appear as a singlet sharp singlet <coughs> and under these conditions the molecule is undergoing a very rapid 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement this is a 100 megahertz NMR spectrum essentially the same features are observed at low temperature you see two sets of signal corresponding to the vinylic and the cyclopropyl and the methane hydrogen at in between temperature there is a broad peaks that are appearing due to the uncertainty in the position of the hydrogens in this molecule and at 120 degrees for example a sharp singlet is what is observed for this molecule for all the 10 hydrogen now the 10 hydrogen intensity signal sharp singlet is essentially a statistical average of these two signals in terms of the chemical shift value one can also study this molecular rearrangement by means of carbon 13 nmr spectroscopy this is a 25 megahertz proton coupled decoupled carbon 13 nmr spectrum recorded in dmf as a solvent there is a peak which is corresponding to DMF which is at this place for example and if you ignore this peak the rest of the peaks can be assigned to the molecule of interest namely the bulvaline. Now if you look at bulvaline structure there should be one carbon corresponding to the cyclopropyl ring carbons, one corresponding to the alpha vinylic position carbons, another one correspond to the beta vinylic position carbon with respect to the cyclopropyl and finally the methane carbon should come separately. So there should be four separate signals for the four different types of chemically distinguishable type of carbons in this particular molecule. And this is essentially seen as four signals. There are two signals which are very close to either which are the vinylic signal coming in this particular region. There is one signal corresponding to the methane hydrogen and one signal corresponding to the cyclopropyl carbon. Sorry, these are all carbon signal, not hydrogen signal. So two vinylic carbon signal, one methane carbon signal and one cyclopropyl carbon signal is what is seen. And as you increase the temperature to room temperature, the broadening takes place because of the uncertainty in the position of the various carbons in during the course of the rearrangement. At 140 degrees or so, all the 10 carbons become a sharp singlet corresponding to a rapid molecular rearrangement that is taking place in the system. So one can study the bulvaline 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement or the cope rearrangement by pro proton NMR spectroscopy as well as carbon 13 NMR spectroscopy. This is one of the most fluxional molecule that has ever been known in organic chemistry. It is a very fascinating example of a molecule undergoing a, uh, undergoing a series of degenerate rearrangements. Let us go to the next example. In this example, instead of a divinyl group, you have a diimino kind of a functional group that is present which is attached to a cyclopropyl ring system. This is very similar to the 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement that we discussed and this essentially undergoes the ring opening reaction to give this structure here and this structure can again undergo ring closing reaction to give the opposite isomer of this. In fact, this is also a degenerate rearrangement. There is no distinction between this molecule and this molecule. Essentially, cyclopropyl is up here and cyclopropyl is down here in this particular spectrum. Now, if you look at the compound here, this would correspond to uh, A2, B2 kind of a system in terms of the spin system. Whereas this molecule would correspond to an A2 which is these two hydrogens here and B and C. These two hydrogens are distinctly different. One is uh, syn with respect to or endo with respect to the pi system. The other one is exo with respect to the pi system. So if the NMR sees this molecule, it would give signals corresponding to a complicated A to B system. If it sees this particular molecule, then it would show a spectrum which is corresponding to a symbol A to B to 
which should be triplet and triplet for this kind of a system. When the molecule is undergoing a very rapid re rearrangement between the two extreme structures, NMR would see an average of these two structures which is equivalent to this particular structure and that is what happens in this system at 110 degrees there is a rapid molecular rearrangement that is taking place. So, NMR is essentially seeing the average of the two structures which corresponds to the structure that is in the middle and as a result of that you see a triplet and another triplet for these two uh, hydrogens which are methylene hydrogen and these two hydrogens which are vinyl hydrogen. The vinyl hydrogen come at a higher delta value compared to the methylene hydrogen in this particular system. Now, when the molecule is actually in a frozen state, when the rearrangement is considerably re reduced at low temperature, at minus 25 degrees for example, what one sees is a second order A to B C kind of a system, which is a fairly complicated. This is A to B and C kind of a system is what is seen here. And in between temperatures, of course, you have the uncertainty principle kicking in. And as a result of that, broadness of the signal is what is seen in the molecular system. So, this is another example of a molecule undergoing a molecular rearrangement. And the transition type kind of a structure is what is seen when the molecular rearrangement is taking place very rapidly under the NMR conditions. <coughs> The NMR spectra of this example can be simulated and the simulated spectrum and the experimental spectrum looks nearly the same under various temperatures in this particular simulated spectra that is shown here. Another interesting example is the isomerization of the double bond in this particular dimethanobridged anulene system. The two methylene groups are equal and a rapidly and double bond migration is taking place at minus 65 degree and hence a single AB quartet is what is seen for the two methylene functional group. In other words, when the molecule is undergoing a rapid interconversion which is the isomerization of the double bond between essentially this double bonds are shifted and another set of double bonds are put in place by means of delocalization of the double bonds in this system. So, this is essentially called double bond isomerization and this is taking place extremely rapidly even at minus 65 degrees or so. Under the rapidly interconverting stage, the NMR would see a structure which is very similar to this. This is a symmetrical structure. This is a C2 axis of symmetry passing through this carbon and this carbon. So, the two methylenes are exchangeable by means of a C2 axis of symmetry. Therefore, the two methylenes are identical in terms of their chemical nature. However, if you see within the methylene, this hydrogen is chemical environment is different compared to this hydrogen which has a different chemical environment. For each of the methylene then one would see only one AB quartet and in fact at minus 65 degrees only one AB quartet is seen. The right hand side spectra are the simulated spectra or the calculated spectra and the left handed ones are the actual experimental spectrum measured at various temperature. Now when the interconversion is considerably reduced at lower temperature that is at minus 138 degrees or so. NMR would see two distinct AB quartets for this methylene separately and this methylene separately because the chemical environment in terms of the double bond locations of this methylene is different from the chemical environment of this methylene with respect to the double bonds of the ring. So, under these conditions there are a pair of AB quartets that one should see. In fact, what one sees is a overlapping AB quartets, two AB quartet is what is seen in this particular they are overlapping and hence they are not very clearly seen as AB quartet. But if you look at carefully, there is one limb of the AB quartet here, the other limb is here and one limb of the AB quartet is here, the other one is over here. So, there are pairs of two pairs of uh, AB quartet which are merging and overlapping with respect to each other in this particular spectrum. And the activation barrier for the isomerization of the double bonds in this particular system is very low, it is about 30 kilojoules per mole. Here is an example of study of carbonium ion rearrangement in two norbornyl system by means of variable temperature NMR spectra. Now, when the molecule is undergoing a 1 2 shift, these are the structures that one can generate and an average of all these three structures can be written in this particular fashion and this molecule, this particular structure has uh, axis of symmetry, threefold axis of symmetry passing through the center of this plus here through this particular carbon which is at the back. In other words, the front three hydrogens are equivalent in, the na in nature and the three methylene bridges are also equivalent in nature. Finally, this methane hydrogen is distinctly different from the rest of the 
hydrogens. So, if one were to look at the uh, NMR spectrum, proton NMR spectrum in a non-nucleophilic solvent, which is a magic acid solvent, which consists of antimony hexafluoride and a sulfur chlorofluoro compound, which is a solvent here, or sulfuryl fluoride is what is sulfuryl chlorofluoride is here, or sulfuryl fluoride is used as a solvent for this study. So, under the conditions of very rapid rearrangement, one should not be able to distinguish between these carbons where the positive charge is residing, for example. In other words, these three carbons should be indistinguishable and hence the three hydrogens which are attached to this carbon are also indistinguishable. So, one should see only one signal corresponding to the red starred hydrogens of this molecule and that is what is seen in the spectrum here as a four hydrogen intensity because one is a methylene group, the other two are methane group in this particular case. And at the same time, these three methylenes are also becoming indistinguishable under rapidly interconverting system. So, a integration of singlet corresponding to six hydrogen is what is seen for these three methylene groups in the molecule. Finally, this particular hydrogen which is a methane hydrogen which is chemically different also seen separately as a separate signal. So, uh, there are three types of hydrogens in this molecule under the conditions are rapidly undergoing interconversion of this particular molecule. However, when the rearrangement is considerably slowed down, the molecule is an asymmetric molecule, a chiral molecule and as a result of that each one of the hydrogen is different. So, you essentially see a complicated second order kind of a pattern is what you see which is not easy to assign for any of these structures straight away. Let us move into an example from organometallic chemistry case. In this particular system, there is a tetramethyl allene which is coordinated to iron tetracarbonyl through an eta 2 kind of a coordination that is taking place. Allene, as you know, is a molecule which is very interesting. It has an axial chirality. This particular one does not have the axial chirality, but in general, allenes are known for their axial chirality. If you take this molecule, these two carbons which are pointed here for example and these two methylene they lie, they lie in one plane and these two carbons and the two methyl groups on the other side lie in a plane which is perpendicular. In other words, two orthogonal planes are bisecting at this particular carbon and this plane is perpendicular to the other plane and the iron tetracarbonyl can either coordinate to this particular olefin or it can migrate to the adjacent position and coordinate to this particular olefin. When it does so, for example, it will come projecting in the front or projecting in the back as it is shown in this particular case. So, during the course of a rapid migration between the two double bonds which is happening, let us say, around the room temperature or so, the four methyl groups are indistinguishable in the molecule and as a result at plus 30 degrees Celsius one sees a sharp singlet for all the four methyl groups corresponding to 12 hydrogen. On the other hand, if the rearrangement is frozen or if the rearrangement is considerably slowed down, then it should be possible to see these two methyl groups as identical groups which are chemically equivalent group, whereas this methyl group is different from this particular methyl group because this would be syn to the alkene, uh, the iron tetracarbonyl, whereas this would be anti to the iron tetracarbonyl. So, these two methyls as a six hydrogen intensity to come as a singlet, which is this particular singlet. This methyl and this methyl should come separately and in fact, it, they do come separately in this particular case and these two signals are corresponding to the two methyls that are seen. One syn to the iron tetracarbonyl, the other one anti to the iron tetracarbonyl, which are seen separately. So, under frozen conditions, the molecule is able to see two sets of, three sets of signals for the methyl group, one corresponding to these two methyl groups, another one corresponding to this methyl group, the third one corresponding to this one. one. On the other hand, when there is a rapid interconversion taking place by migration of the iron tetracarbonyl fragment between these two perpendicularly placed olefins, then all you see is one singlet corresponding to 12 hydrogen intensity. These are some more examples of an iron tricarbonyl walking around the spy system and this rearrangement is very facile. It goes from one eta 4 to another eta 4 kind of a coordination 
and the activation barrier for this rearrangement is about 33 kilojoules per mole so it should be happening very rapidly at room temperature whereas the corresponding azepine derivative has a slightly higher activation barrier of 65 kilojoules per mole so this kind of examples are studied by variable temperature nmr spectroscopy and the activation parameters were derived from the variable temperature nmr spectroscopy one more example of a migration of an iron group this is a case where the iron dicarbonyl is coordinated in a eta 5 fashion to one of the cyclopentadienyl ring system and as a eta 1 to the other cyclopentadiene derivative. In fact, the red and the blue are essentially cyclopentadiene molecule. In one case, it is eta 5, the other one, it is a eta 1. In fact, upon rearrangement, this can become a eta 5 and this can become an eta 1 kind of a system. Now, if it is rapidly interconverting between the two systems, you will not be able to distinguish an eta 1 from an eta 5. All the 10 hydrogens, 5 of them in this particular ring and 5 of them in this particular ring will come as a singlet. In fact, it does so at room temperature as a sharp singlet for this one. And the rest of the spectra are measured at low temperature. When the rearrangement is considerably slowed down, one should see separate signal for this hydrogen, these two hydrogens and those two hydrogens separately. In fact, only the eta 1 CP ring signals are shown here. HA, HB, HC corresponds to this one being a HA, this one HB and this one HC. Three sets of signals are seen here. You can also see sort of an AB kind of a pattern in this particular feature of this particular spectrum that would correspond to the two olefinic kind of a hydrogen that you have in this molecule, which is a AB kind of, a, in fact, it's a AA prime, BB prime kind of a system. And that is what one sees in terms of the multiplet that sees for the hydrogen in this case. Now, dimethyl aluminium, sorry, trimethyl aluminium can undergo dimerization at low temperature to form a dimeric structure like this one. At room temperature or higher temperatures, it exists as a monomer. In fact, in the monomer case, if you look at, there are three methyl groups and there are nine hydrogens in these three methyl groups. All the three methyl groups are chemically identical. As a result of that, only a singlet is seen at around zero degrees or so. And above zero degrees, of course, it will be a sharp singlet. All the nine hydrogens of the three methyl group appear as a singlet because it exists in the form of a monomer. When you cool it to minus 50 degrees or so, the association is complete. Two moles of the trimethyl aluminum actually undergoes a dimeric kind of a structure with the bridging methyls and the terminal methyls. There are two types of methyls in this molecule. One is the bridging methyl, which is the center methyl here, and four terminal methyls are also present, present here. Now, the terminal methyls have a different chemical environment compared to the bridging methyl. So, the two bridging methyls should come at a separate chemical shift value, and the four terminal methyls should come as a separate chemical shift value. In fact, the B and T abbreviations are given T for the terminal and B for the bridging methyl. The bridging methyl comes at a higher delta value compared to the terminal methyls which come at the lower delta value. The ratio would be approximately uh, 6 hydrogens here and 12 hydrogens here. In other words, sorry, 6 hydrogens here and 12 hydrogens here corresponding to a 1 is to 2 ratio of the two types of methyl groups that you have in this molecule. In between temperatures, you cannot distinguish whether the methyl is a terminal methyl or a bridging methyl. So, there is a large uncertainty in terms of the chemical shift values of the methyl at intermediate temperatures. Now, remember when we were interpreting the NMR spectra, we also discussed about the D2O exchangeability of OH hydrogen, NH2 hydrogen and so on. This exchange process is controlled by temperature. The rate of the exchange process can be controlled by temperature. Under room, condi room temperature condition, there will be a rapid exchange of the OH hydrogen in methanol, for example. Just to distinguish the two types of hydrogen, one is given in a green color, the other one is given in the red color. You can see here this green color hydrogen has migrated to where it was originally the red color and the red color has come to this particular molecule. So there is a mutual exchange of hydrogen among the methyl alcohol molecule and because of this mutual exchange, the chemical environment of the hydrogen is very poorly defined. So at room temperature, essentially because of the rapid migration 
of the hydrogen from one methanol molecule to another methanol molecule, one sees an average signal which is this particular signal corresponding to the OH and the methyl of course is seen separately. There is no coupling between the methyl hydrogens and the OH hydrogens because the position of the OH hydrogen cannot be uh, defined very clearly under the conditions of very rapid rearrangement. So, there is no coupling between the CH3 and the OH at room temperature also. When you measure the temp spectrum at minus 65 degree Celsius, now the exchange process is considerably slowed down. The lifetime of the hydrogen attached to this particular oxygen is long enough for the methyl to see this hydrogen. So, there is a coupling between this is essentially a vicinal coupling if you look at it carefully. Four bond coupling is what is seen here. So, the methyl is able to see the presence of hydrogen when it is residing here long enough. Under those conditions, the methyl is split into a doublet which is seen here as a doublet and the OH is split into a quartet by the methyl which is a first order quartet very clearly seen. So, here is another example of a migration or exchange of a OH proton in methanol as a function of temperature is what is seen in the spectra that is shown here. Now, molecular association can be easily studied, particularly if it is a pi stacking interaction study. This is essentially a pi dimer formation between molecules which have pi electron rich uh, nucleus for example. Ideal example would be pyrene as a molecule. Pyrene is a hydrocarbon which can undergo aggregation in solution in this particular fashion. As long as you have a equilibrium constant between the dimer and the monomer which is shown here, this equilibrium constant would be dependent upon the, the it will depend on the effect of concentration as well as the effect of temperature. So, now if one looks at this molecule which is a star shaped molecule, the core is a triphenylene core and the periphery is the phenyl acid uh, benzophenone kind of a group is what is attached attached through an acetylenic functional group in this molecule. This molecule undergoes aggregation in solution when the spectrum is measured in a solvent which is CdCl3. It, it is concentration dependent as you can see in this spectrum for example going from 0 0.028 molar concentration to 0 0.0001 molar concentration. As you dilute the sample further and further what happens is this hydrogen which is the triphenylene hydrogen, there are six hydrogens in triphenylene, one, two, three, four, five, six. These six hydrogen appear as a singlet at around 7.8 delta ppm at the concentrated solution. When the solution is diluted, they come all the way down to about 8.9 ppm or so. And this is essentially because of the dilution causing the dissociation of the aggregate that is originally formed. In concentrated solution you have an aggregated molecule whereas in a dilute solution you have a dissociation to monomeric system. In other words this is close to the monomer kind of a system the hydrogen delta value whereas this is close to the dimer kind of a system corresponding to the delta value of the dimer for the uh, triphenyl hydrogens of this particular molecule. This is a temperature dependent spectrum. This is 273K and this is about 328K. As you increase the temperature, dissociation should be more and more facile. So, at high temperatures actually, one should see the monomeric species. The monomeric species again has a high delta value around 8.5 or so, whereas the low temperature gives the dimeric or the aggregate kind of a system and this is the corresponding to the aggregated molecule. The triphenyl signal is what is seen here and in all the cases the concentration is maintained same. Now based on this equilibrium one can now come from the NMR spectra one can determine the delta for the monomer to be 8.93 ppm of the triphenyl in protons and the delta for the dimer to be about 7.34 ppm or so. Using this values one can calculate the mole fraction of the dimer and the monomer in a given temperature condition. and based on the kinetics that was performed using variable temperature NMR spectroscopy, the association constant is turned out to be 150 per mole or so and these are the thermodynamic parameters corresponding to this particular equilibrium calculated based on the variable temperature NMR spectroscopy. Now, the procedure that is adopted for this study is essentially coming from this particular reference and in this reference the estimation of dimeric constant of very weak complexes using proton NMR chemical shift is what is discussed. We essentially used that protocol to study this e equilibrium 
by variable temperature as well as variable concentration NMR spectroscopy for looking at this dimerization process. So, let us conclude this particular module by saying that the variable temperature NMR spectroscopy is extremely useful for the study of dynamic processes such as conformational dynamics as in the case of cyclohexane chair going from one chair form to another chair form, restricted rotation as in the case of dimethyl formamide, the C, double N bond, C single bond N restricted rotation, molecular rearrangement with the famous bulbulin as an example and molecular association in solution particularly of the triphenylene molecule and the trimethyl aluminium kind of a molecules that we discussed. From these studies it is possible to obtain rate constant as well as the equilibrium constant of such processes and deduce the relevant thermodynamic parameter from NMR studies. Hope this presentation was useful to you and the references for this kind of uh, variable temperature NMR or the dynamic effect study by NMR spectroscopy comes from Gunther's book on NMR spectroscopy. Here is another book, this is a fairly old book, nevertheless it is a good book on uh, rate determined dependent phenomenon there is a separate chapter by NMR spectroscopy and I recommend reading these two types of uh, reference material for the dynamic processes study by variable temperature NMR spectroscopy. Thank you very much for your kind attention.